The c &E's have been a very popular series of lenses for Canon, for people wanting Canon's warm tones and character at a great price point. Today, we are looking at their latest new Cine Prime offering, the Sumerays. Sumire is a Japanese word and can have a range of meanings depending on the kanji that are used, but is normally associated with words such as femininity, flower, and gentle. The Sumire lenses physically look extremely similar to the CNE series of lenses. This one's the Sumire, by the way. I really wish that Canon had changed the housing more from the CNEs. I understand the choice to keep the housing similar to reduce costs, but brand perception is so important, and I feel like some people may just write off these lenses for being the same as CNEs, which is a shame. The Sumire set will consist of the same focal lengths as the current c &E line. 14, 20, 24, 35, 50, 85 and 135. All with the same apertures as the c &E line, which range from T1.3 at their widest to T3.1. According to Canon, their optical formulas are not the same as the c &E's. All of the lenses in the set will have 11 aperture blades, a front diameter of 114mm and a consistent length of 93.5mm. The lenses also have a 300 degree focus throw and consistent gear placement for focus and iris. Thankfully, these lenses will come as a standard in PL mount. This is a huge relief as this was one of the massive downsides of the original CNE primes. Canon are also planning the ability to switch to an EF mount, but they haven't confirmed that this will be possible by an end user or a Canon service facility. Unfortunately, the PL mount will not have any communication like LDS or iData. We had the lenses for around half a day, so we only had a very small amount of time to do some tests, but we were lucky enough to have a set of CNEs and K35s to compare the Sumerays to. Canon only had the 35 and 50 mm available to test at the moment, but we were getting the other focal lengths in as soon as possible. We started with checking the lenses on the projector. The focus scales were bang on, and it was immediately apparent that these lenses were in fact very different to the CNEs. Wide open, both the 35 and the 50mm have a large amount of halation all over the frame, which both the CNEs and the K35s do not have. This is reduced massively when you stop down to around T2. I think this is how Canon are achieving the way the lens is handling highlights. Bright skin and highlights bloom and roll in a very pleasing way, especially when you compare them to the CNEs. It also gives the out of focus areas a really interesting character. It reminds me of a few vintage lenses available at the moment, but let's move on to some more visual tests. We shot all of these tests on our Red Monstro in full 8K 8 to 1 compression using a range of lighting and a Dado D87 as the flare source set to 3200 Kelvin. When looking at bokeh, between the 35mm you can clearly see a difference between the Sumire and the other two. Both the K35 and the CNE have a heavy onion ring whereas the Sumire doesn't have as much. The Sumire also has a lot more edge definition. Wide open, all three lenses have green aberrations and suffer from cat's eye effects getting worse towards the corners of frame. Looking at the 50mm bokeh from the Sumire, it's extremely similar to the CNE, with both lenses still having green fringing and defined edges, but much less onion ring than the K35s, which still suffer massively. When it comes to flare, the CNE and the Sumire look almost identical with the same colour and aberrations. The 50mm K35 is much softer and has a much less saturated set of aberrations, and in my opinion, a more pleasing look. With the 35mm, I think I prefer the look of the Sumire and the CNE flares, however. When it comes to breathing, looking at the 35mm, all lenses suffer from roughly the same amount of focus breathing, but it's not dreadful by any means. Looking at the 50mm, the K35 has the worst, with the other two lenses showing roughly the same. All three lenses covered our Monstro Vista Vision sensor absolutely fine. However, each set of lenses suffers from light loss out towards the corners, which is better handled when stopped down. When it comes to sharpness, the Sumire's resolve decently well in the center, but wide open there is such a large amount of halation that gives the appearance of the image being softened. Stop down to T2, the halation is massively reduced and the lens resolves very nicely. Comparatively to the CNE and K35, I would say that both of these lenses have comparable sharpness, with the K35s having a bit less halation than the Sumire's, and then the CNE's having a lot less. All three lenses suffer from chromatic aberration. The CNE and Sumire have a touch more when wide open than the K35s, and are very similar with how the aberrations look. As you'd expect, when you stop down, these aberrations are reduced. These lenses will be launching in July, and at the time, the 24, 35, and 50 will be available, with the 85 following in August, 
135 in October, 14 in November, and 20 in January 2020. The lenses are going to be around six and a half thousand euros per lens, which brings the set in at around 36,000 pounds. That may seem steep to some, but the Sumerays offer a very deep and characterful look, which not many other lenses do at their price point. Pair that with very solid and smooth mechanics, modern housing and easy serviceability, these may be a very attractive upgrade for people currently shooting with other mid-range primes but want a more unique and flawed character to their footage. We'll be getting the full set in for a full review very soon, so if you want to see some more footage from these lenses, make sure you're subscribed.